Hello guys, welcome back to the second channel. Today we're going to look inside the second curiosity box by Vsauce. It's full of science and brain food for the inquisitive mind and part of the proceeds go to Alzheimer's Research. If you want to know more about the box, you want to get one for yourself, link will be in the description box underneath this video. But let's get right inside this curiosity box. We have Curiosity Quarterly, the magazine that tells us more about what is inside of this box, plus some other information about creators and artists and whatnot that they are uh, supporting this time round. So we'll have a read at that after. Now the mascot for Curiosity Box is Inquisitive the Octopus and it looks like we've got a few ink branded stuff in here, starting with the Curious Enamels Collector's Enamel Pin, which features Inquisitive the Octopus in a splunking helmet with a pickaxe ready to go down a mine shaft and uh, mine out some uh, precious minerals, perhaps some geodes or fossils of which I believe there are some in the bottom of this box, which I'm very excited to get to. So that's a Collector's Enamel Pin badge, looks very good, um, nice interesting design. Now don't freak out, this is the cutest thing you will ever see. Look at him! Ah! Look at the tentacles! Look at his eyes are so gorgeous! No, he is absolutely fantastic. That's an inquisitive ink the octopus plushie. He's so soft and like his little tentacles. He is gorgeous and cute. He is fantastic. And he's got his little uh, tag on here. It says, ink! Within the sea is where I live. I love to learn and think. My full name is inquisitive, but you can call me ink. And that label is in fact a sticker. So we can stick a little label somewhere as well. But look how cute! He is going to go somewhere really nice. I adore him. Curiosity Boxes inks hydrophobic sand. So this is the same stuff you get um, around about Christmas time, advertised for kids. It's like magic sand. Um, so when it goes in water, you can build structures from it. But as soon as you remove it from water, it turns back into a dry powder. All the grains of sand are coated with some sort of hydrophobic uh, coating. So we should be able to get some cool sculptures out of that once I open it up. I'll have a look at that in a minute. The final mascot ink branded object is this, Ink's Beaker Mug. And look at that cool graphic in the front, giving him the thumbs up uh, while drinking from his beaker. So this is a 300 milliliter beaker mug. Shh, do you hear that? The less liquid this beaker contains, the lower its volume will be. Just kidding, we won't be less loud because we're talking about volume as a measure of space occupied. Use this beaker to compare your beverages and other liquid volumes. So this is a mug designed like a chemistry lab beaker and it's got the measurements up the side. So there we are, a little glass beaker with the measurements on the side, 300 milliliters curiosity box and it has some little factoids about all the different measurements as we go up. 25 milliliters filled to here, the beaker contains about 835 sextillion water molecules. 100 milliliters, approximately one septum vigintillionth of the volume of the observable universe. Well, that's a small number. 150 milliliters, the volume of blood in the human brain. 225 milliliters, the amount of nail polish needed for 338 manicures. 250 milliliters, the amount of mucus produced by your nose every six hours. That's disgusting, every six hours. That much mucus. Ugh. And filled to the 300 milliliter line, the beaker contains approximately 10 septillion water molecules. So that's a quirky science-based practical item designed like something out of a chemistry lab. More of that stuff, Vsauce, please. I think that's really, really cool. The Vsauce exclusive t-shirt for this time round. I wonder what's inside this time. Oh, it's grey! I like grey. Grey's a good colour. So what we have is the cartoon wolf following the scent of pie on the windowsill, but of course pie is not an edible pie on this picture, it's uh, the number pie. So that's um, a little cartoon meme with the mathematical twist on a grey t-shirt, and I think that's a great colour for a t-shirt. Possibly not as badass as last time's t-shirt, but I will certainly wear it, it looks great. Our Steam download this time is Simple Planes, the tools you need to bring any airplane to life. Build airplanes by snapping parts together, designing wing sections and attaching engines. Anytime strap yourself into the cockpit and see how it flies with realistic physics. This one I will probably play. That sounds really interesting to design planes and see how well they fly. I'm not a... not an aeronautical engineer, but uh, I reckon I could give it a go. I reckon I could get a plane to fly. I know what I'm doing. I think I've got enough physics behind me to be able to do that. I'll give that one a shot, that's really cool. 
The book this time is Mark Neodinic Stuff Matters, uh, exploring the marvellous materials that shape our man-made world, and this is the Curiosity Box official selection cover on it. The internal blurb reads, Why is glass see-through? What makes elastic stretchy? And why does a paper clip bend? Why does materials look and behave the way they do? So this would be a scientific look at our everyday objects, things that we use all the time and take for granted, and ask the questions, what about them? gives them those physical properties, scientifically. And that's going to be a very interesting read because I think there's going to be a lot of stuff in there that I've not really questioned before. Things that you just take for granted, you've never really questioned, you go, well, why, why is that? Why are some materials have special properties over others? So I'm looking forward to reading that book. I'm still not finished the previous book, Packing for Mars, which, by the way, is a great read if you can pick that up. Um, very good. Uh, it's So far, I've just been reading that and a few other things, but we'll get round to the books because they are going to be excellent, guaranteed. Books are definitely the best part of the curiosity box. And finally we get on to the last item in our box. Shh, box. Spheroidal mass of mineral matter science kit. This is two real geodes to smash open and discover amazing crystals. You're talking to Guy right now whose bedroom is kitted out with fossils and geodes, so I'm Uber excited! So excited! So we've got two premium quality geos, safety glasses, information guide, and a display stand. So we're going to get two big rocks in here, we're going to smash them open, and we're going to find out the crystal structure inside. Oh yes! Let's get the box open before we get too carried away with ourselves. Safety first, guys. Safety first. There's our magnifying glass and display stand. And then we have two bottles of rock. Geode mine. And we have the learning guide here, which is just packed full of information. What are geodes? How geodes are formed? Uh, all different types of geodes. Agate, amethyst, calcite, quartz. And it gives you a lot of information about everything. One of the most fascinating rock formations, geodes are typically hollow, rounded rocks filled with beautiful crystals. The crystals grow towards the centre of the cavity over millions of years, gradually forming a glittering lining. Usually the crystals are quartz, calcite or fluorite, but other minerals may be found. Some sedimentary geodes have been found in layers of limestone formed in ancient seas. These geodes seem to have grown in cavities left by decomposed sea life for they take the shape of the marine organisms they replaced. But really what we want to find out is how we crack open a geode. The hammer and chisel method. To open a geode with a hammer and chisel, score the geode all the way around the circumference with a flat faced chisel. Be very careful not to strike the chisel too hard with the hammer. Continue this process until you see a crack develop in the geode and then follow the crack around the geode until it opens. Hit lightly at first and then strike harder until it opens. If you don't have a chisel, a hammer alone will work although it's not as precise. So these are our two geodes. This one here is very pink in colour, very light pink, and we can see some of the crystalline structure even on the outside here. So I'm very excited to get inside this one and see how pretty that is. Hopefully it'll be as pretty as its pink exterior. And this one is more golden, sort of brown colour. Um, not as big as this one, although not as big as the pink one. And I'm interested to see. I wonder what's inside them both. Okay, so I've uh, cleared myself a lot of space on the workbench here and I've got my hammer and my chisel at the ready. And we're going to see if we can get inside these geodes and get them in half uh, properly and without messing it up and getting them into tiny pieces and needing a sock. Yes, it turns out geodes are pretty tough, and I think my neighbours are going to get really angry at me for hammering so hard at this time of night. So I'll get back to these at some other point, and then I'll let you see what they look like inside. So that was the Vsauce Curiosity Box this time round. What did I like? Well, I liked the book. The book's going to be a really good read, so the book's always really good inside the Curiosity Box, I think. So looking forward to that. I love the little plushy. How cute is that? He's gorgeous! He's gorgeous. Love the geodes as well, and I'll love them even more once I've smashed them open. Everything else is pretty good, um, but those were my favourites, so remember, a link will be in the description box if you want to get yourself a curiosity box by Vsauce. But anyway, that's enough for now. See you later.